Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You, where this week's loser is presenting it. <laughs> I think this is a thing about um, party funding. This mm. has been one story of the week, isn't it? But the one I'm really interested in, Angus, is... <laughs> You and this prostitute, <laughs> how did you manage to, to get off paying her? Uh, she didn't tell me that she was a prostitute. She didn't tell you? No. But you must have paid her for the article. I mean, I don't want to dwell on this, but... Uh... <laughs> he made me groan all night. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Reading the autocue? <laughs> This was the best lover I've ever had, and you didn't pay her. <laughs> this, uh, this is just unbelievable. We, we could have kept going till breakfast. <laughs> what are you doing? Talking about football? Uh, you did describe yourself as a model of new Labour conformity. Really? Mm. Oh, what was I on at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just consulting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see the £20 note, because there's no way you've spent it in the last week. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't bring it with me, unfortunately. Sorry. As porn baron Richard Desmond, the Times recently printed a full list of Mr Desmond's publications, which include Big Girls, Mega Boobs, Big Runs International and The Very Best of Whoppers, uh, which is also published under the title Stephen Byer's Autobiography. <laughs> oh, it could be a list that you have for room service. <laughs> in the last year. No, I spent £2,000 on taxes. And you spent £103 on a taxi for Helen Mirren. Well, that was just a mistake. I... <laughs> no one Do you know what a mistake <laughs> is? <laughs> I've heard of that. I can think of worse uses of public money, really. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Give you. me time. Yeah. <laughs> The scheme involves drivers being charged a fee for using motorways, uh, with It says here that you play gangster rap on the, on the, um, <laughs> on the stereo. <laughs> really? what, what, what's, what's gangster rap? How I have no that idea, Ian. What's gangster rap? <laughs> Do you know, that was one of the few terms in the article I didn't understand. <laughs> Oh well, uh, there we are. Uh, the scheme involves... Just because it's gone down there, I don't think it's yeah, going to work. Yeah, no. <laughs> Looking forward to its re-emergence. Uh, the uh, scheme involves drivers being uh, charged a fee for using motorways, uh, with the exception of the M25, where it'll be pay and display. Uh, really? The, you didn't uh, do the pay bit, did you? No. <laughs> You'll most shortly wake up next week and find he's sold something else off. <laughs> yes. uh, and finally in this round, Paul and Ken, your total fabrication. This is terrible, really. These, these chickens that were bred without feathers, so it's like his Sunday dinner walking around. I mean... <laughs> so what are some of the disadvantages of the, uh, these birds that you saw pictures of? They sing out a tune. <laughs> I should imagine they feel... To uh, survive an English winter is the other drawback. Neither would any of us running around naked. Well, exactly. I mean, you only have to look at a freezer in a supermarket. They're dead as mutton in there. I mean, <laughs> clearly the cold doesn't agree with them at all. And um, what was some of the other uh, genetic... None names? of this is going to be used. <laughs> <laughs> Other things are Just move on quickly. Genetically modified animals this week. Uh, uh, a giraffe with no neck, a horse that can yes. speak, a mouse that plays a mouth organ. Yeah. Well, move on. Okay. Next. According to the Daily Mail on Tuesday, uh, scientists have also developed a piglet uh, with a fluorescent snout and organs suitable for human use. Apparently, it's working behind the bar at the Queen Vic. <laughs> so, uh, at, uh, at the end of that round. You should be safe from you? I believe so. <laughs> You, uh, you, you watch these senders? Uh, oh, yes, almost. It's terrible at the moment, mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh, Ian okay. Beale slept mm. with a prostitute. She's threatening to blackmail him for money. <laughs> so just not as lifelike it as it used to be. It never happened in real life. No, no. It's true. Uh, so at the end of that round, um, <laughs> the scores, you'll be delighted to know, are uh, like the number of players in a full England squad practice match these days, four aside. Yes. Which and actually, I think, is just an aid memoir. Just poody poo pooed in. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them for all of them. Blairy, blurry, Blair. <laughs> yeah, Blair has got a nickname as well, of course. Do you really Here, boy. 
<laughs> in Berlin on Wednesday, one group of protesters greeted George Bush with a banner saying, if you can read this, you're not the president. <laughs> much the average man shaves in the course of a lifetime and have come up with some figure if he didn't shave his beard would reach from here to Manchester or London or whatever so it's one of those stories basically about what the average man gets up to in his uneventful life yes. <laughs> what were the other fascinating facts it also said that the average man has sex twice a week which with people like you around means there's a lot of people getting nothing <laughs> great <laughs> Is that what you're saying? It's not true. Is that, is that what you're saying? You're right. <laughs> it's not true. That's what you're saying. Elements are true. Elements are untrue. There was an elephant in there. <laughs> <laughs> Question about um, <clears throat> the Roman transvestite this week. Oh, yes. I did anyone read that? Yeah. It was just under all the stories about Angus, but it was rather good. <laughs> Remind me. It was this, they found the remains of a Roman transvestite who lived happily mm. um, in England. He belonged to the cult of this woman called Sibylle, and all her followers um, used to go out into the streets, and if they'd been unfaithful, they would cut off their own testicles as a symbol of repentance. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> thank God I, we live I'm in enlightened times. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone got a pair of nail scissors? <laughs> Chance of what for women? Help yourself. Is that what you said? You've said you that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it's very bad, really, to have bought the newspapers. I mean, imagine going to that kind of effort. To, you know, I mean, I, I was as guilty of Ian, really, of sort of bringing on the front cover of the news of the world. I mean, it's really, to go to all that kind of effort is just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wrong answer. <laughs> They're available in cream as well. Are they? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, controlling TV viewing is the eye, oh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, the only answer is to hide it, apparently, according really? to Really? Yes. <laughs> Neuropsychologist said that. Did he? Yeah. Uh, next, I what last week? Why did I bother? Book a hotel room. <laughs> Got me Barclay card dirty. <laughs> Hi, no. the PR. No. Or I'll tell you another story I know quite well. Okay. <laughs> You've got a copy of my T-shirt over there. <laughs> All of which uh, natural rambling brings an end to tonight's field trip, and the scores are quite simply seven all. On which uh, conclusive note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Dave Gorman, Paul Merton and Ken Livingstone. And I leave you with...